So good afternoon everyone. Today we're going to talk about the firewall day two. Certain different types of security devices that we do have given us by Cisco itself. Now what are the different devices? Let's understand that. We have already talked about the device called as a firewall. We do have one more device which we call as an IPS which is abbreviated as what? The intrusion prevention system. Yet another device we do have which is called as IDS. Intrusion detection system. Now, what are the different de definitions that we do have for these devices? Firewall. It's a network security device that filters the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on the predetermined rule. And rules can be like your access list. The rules can be like the policy based rules are there. Rules can be like, say, for example, NAT. On the basis of that, the firewall takes the decision whether the traffic needs to be sent or the traffic needs to be blocked over there on a respective ports. What is an IPS? IPS, on the contrary, inspects the traffic. It inspects the traffic, detects the behavior, classify the packet, and then proactively stop the malicious traffic from attack. So it not only detects it, but it going to prevent it also by blocking the traffic what is ideas ideas is a monitoring device which monitors the traffic for malicious activity or policy violation and send alert on a detection how this works let's talk about the principle of working the firewall filters the traffic on the base of source ip destination ip source port and the destination port and then it builds a connection table to make that firewall as a stateful firewall how ips works ips inspects the real time traffic and then looks the pattern or the signature of an attack so it it does what basically a deep packet inspection and then prevent the attacks on detection so it prevents it also so that's the basic difference between an IPS and IDS is IDS it's basically a controlling device that means it not only detects the traffic it detects the malicious software but it also proactively can block the traffic also unlike your IDS IDS inspects the real-time traffic uh, look traffic patterns or signature as like IPS but instead of blocking it it just sends and generates an alerts and send it to the respective devices where you have already configured as a span that we're going to talk about what is the configuration mode firewall can be deployed in layer 3 mode which we call as a routed mode or maybe in the transparent mode ips and ideas can be deployed in inline as well as the passive mode but placement where you actually place the firewall firewall will be in the production just next to the network where the isps are there at the perimeter level IPS is just next to the firewall and ideas we generally deploy with respect to this path. Now let's understand how we deploy that. Let's say for example, this is my firewall. This is my firewall. This is my yet another firewall is there. And this is my third firewall, which is three firewalls I'm considering with three different scenarios. This first scenario, and this will be my second scenario, and that will be my third scenario. So here it's connects like this, connects like this, and this also connects like this. Okay, here also I have different things. Let's understand them. Over here, guys, I'm having what? My internet. My internet is here. Similarly, over here also I'm having my internet. There's my ISPs. And here also I have an internet. So basically, what I'm having is the different types of devices I'm having. This is my van or internet. This is also my van. This is also my van. This is my firewall. How we deploy the firewall? Just from where the internet is coming, just directly uh, at the perimeter. There we deploy the firewall. And then you can have your own LAN segments where the different different PCs are present over there. Okay, how we so this is your firewall deployment in the production. How you deploy the IPS basically, you will be having a firewall just next to the firewall. You have what IPS which is going to prevent the traffic 
which is going to prevent the traffic on the basis of signatures and all. So here also I'm having my LAN and this is your IPS, which prevents the traffic. It prevents the traffic, all right? Then we do have what? The IPS. IPS is generally being deployed in a way, this will be my switch. And then here we go with the IPS, IDS, sorry, IDS. It's connected with this. And then I'm having a lag. Now let's understand the traffic flow. When I say the traffic flow with these devices, whenever the traffic is coming, this will be your outside interface. This will be my inside interface, lower security level to the higher security level. But the traffic is allowed on the basis of respective policy. Firewall does the traffic inspection on the base of source IP or destination IP along with source port as well as destination port. But I can do the spoofing and many other different things I can do that. Let's say for example the traffic is allowed. So traffic will be blocked on the basis of these four things. That's why for the deep packet inspection any malicious software is coming over there. The firewall is going to allow that. So to block it what happens is we have one more device just next to the firewall that we call as an IPS which is going to do the deep analysis deep analysis of the packet if he, it finds it checks what the signature it checks what the pattern of a traffic and if it thinks that uh, some malicious code is there it is not only going to detect it it is going to block the traffic also but how the particular uh, your ids works so this is your ips deployment how your IDS used to work because nowadays we have been replaced with the IPS. How this particular uh, IDS used to work is your traffic is coming over here on the switch. One of the port we create as a spam port, switch port analyzer. So whatever the traffic is coming on the switch, it is going to redirect towards a mirror the a traffic and send it towards the IDS device. IDS check all this patterns and signature and if you found that the malicious activity is there This switch is going to be connected with what any log generator device or Cisco and map where the this IDS is going to tell boss certain uh, Malicious software is there. It is going to detect it. Yes, I'm not denying of that. It is going to detect it But it cannot prevent it It cannot prevent it Right, so it is just going to detect it how it detects on the switch Whatever the traffic is coming on this particular interface is going to mirror it with the help of spam And with that particular port the IDS is going to connect it But what's going to happen whenever you have deployed an IDS in your system It is just going to detect the malicious software, but that malicious software will insert in your LAN That's why IPS is better than what IDS and that's why because firewall does not do any packet analysis, we deploy just next to the firewall what the IP is because it is not only going to detect it, it is going to block at the packet level because it is doing the deep packet inspection. If any payload which comes with a malicious software or malicious code, we already talked about virus, your frozen, your worms, anything, it is going to block that on the basis of what? The signatures and all. Now saying this, if I go a little bit further ahead, we're going to talk that in the future lectures much more in detail. But as of now, there are two types of mode. One, firewall can be deployed in a routed mode or can be deployed in a transparent mode. What is a routed or what is a transparent mode? Let's understand that. I have a firewall, right? When both the interfaces of that particular firewall, by default mode is what? by default mode of a firewall to be deployed is routed that means like a router what is a router router every interface will be there in a different broadcast domain so this will be in a different broadcast domain this will be in a different broadcast domain and how we define that by giving a different different ip subnet so let's say for example here the subnet is 1.1.1.0 slash 24 so the firewall another interface should be in a different subnet that means when each uh, interface of a particular firewall is in a different subnet it is called as a routed port but when a firewall 
is being deployed in a transparent mode then it does not requires any ip on those particular interfaces it's just like basically they are in the same subnet so let's say for example i'm having r1 over here r2 over here r1 ip is 1.1.1.0 slash 24 this entire subnet is this let's say for example 1.1.1.1 and here the ip should be 1.1.1.2 that means the entire thing will be in single broadcast domain this is also called as your like bump in a wire bump in a wire basically this is called as a transparent mode now saying this how your ips and ids is going to be deployed ip is deployed in two ways one we call as inline mode another one is called as a passive mode now in the production you can use ips in either of the mode in a very same way r1 is there let's say for example i'm taking just an analogy when connects with an ips and again i'm having an r2 over there ips inspect so you never give an ip addresses to the ips these ports it's again like a bump in a wire between r1 and r2 the subnet is 1.1.1.0 slash 24 because it does not do the analysis and the packet filtering on the basis of source ip destiny it does the deep packet inspection it behaves on the basis of the signatures and the patterns over there so inline mode means both the interfaces of the ips are connected with two different devices whatever the traffic flow this is your ingress port and this becomes your egress port and so on and so forth this is like an inline method and the traffic if it gets like it's a suspicious traffic it is going to block it this is basically called as what ips in an inline mode what is ips can we deploy in a passive mode yes so whenever ips is deployed in a passive mode it is acting as an ids why because in the passive mode it is just going to detect it and send a logs generated it is just going to generate a log and send it to the respective devices over there how I'm having an R1 which is connected to over here with a switch. Let's say, for example, then connects with another switch and then uh, another router, and then we have an IPS. This is IPS in a passive mode, which is nothing but pretty much like your IDS itself. So, IPS is connected over here. This will be your spam port, switch port analyzer, whatever the traffic is going mirror if it detects the traffic still it is going to reach to the R2 but it is going to generate an alert on top of that i hope this points are clear with everyone so next topic is what is utm and next generation firewall how it comes into the picture now when you talk about the utm and when you talk about the next generation firewall the topic was one device this is what their slogan was one device one GUI, manage everything. But at that particular moment, until 2003, Cisco was doing good. Cisco was doing fantastically well there with their device called as ASF. Previously, it was used to call as a PIX. Then we call from 7.x version, it is called as an adaptive security appliance. But this ASA, as I said that, is capable of doing inspection on the basis of source IP and destination IP or on the basis of source port and the destination port. What extra that we have done with the ASA firewall, they make this ASA firewall as a stateful firewall. Right, this is your stateful firewall. If you want to do the analysis of the packet, like the payload, we have to buy a separate module or the device that we generally coining as what IPS, which does the inspection on the basis of signatures, or it checks the pattern of that particular device and then block it. That means both are two different, uh, uh, what do you call that, devices are there. In a very same way, if you want to have a proxy, to do the web proxy, we have a different device which we call as an iron port also, WSA. Similarly, we have what? Email security also, WESA, email security appliances. That means for everything, you need to buy different, different, different devices. And when you have multiple devices, obviously your total cost of ownership goes high like anything. Plus maintenance, plus management was an issue. For to manage ASA, you have a different user interface. For IPS, you have a different user interface. For WSA, you have a different, as well as your ESA, which is not the one device, one GUI, and manage everything. At this particular moment, 
Palo Alto have taken the market like anything. How? They say is that we have one device, right, which is capable of doing all the things of your firewall, which is capable of giving us what? Layer 7 features, web filtering, email security. They can give you load balancing a little bit at a basic level. They can give you what the HA, high availability over there from one GUI itself. What else they can do? They can give you application visibility control and many different things. But Cisco was still at ASA level, ASA firewall, different device, IPS, uh, different device, WSA, different device, ESA, different device, and so on and so forth. So there starts the Palo Alto shares to go high. Now let me talk about now what is UTM first and then how Cisco enters into the next generation firewall. Now I believe you got an idea of what is the slogan for this. Now what is the next generation firewall? Next generation firewalls are the firewalls which have actually been included your different different features like it include it should include your URL filtering, application visibility control, it can check the applications also whatever the traffic with respect, uh, respect to the application which is going on. It is going to do what? The context awareness, IPS, advanced malware protection, and identity based what access. All these points comprises and makes one device with one device, one operating system, with one GUI, and can manage all these things. That is what we call as a next generation firewall. Now, what is UTM then? UTM and next whenever you say UTM and whenever you say a next generation firewall yes there are slight differences are there but more or less they are same but these are the two different naming convention given by different uh, uh, analytical report companies like unified threat management this is your UTM or also called as USM which is unified security management is the evolution of traditional firewall in to an all inclusive security products are able to perform multiple security functions within one single system. So one system with one GUI with one operating system, right, should be capable of doing what? The network filtering, IPS IDS, gateway antivirus, gateway anti-spam, VPN also, content filtering, load balancing, DLP, as well as online appliance uh, reporting tool also. The UTM is the terminology invented by IDC and Cisco was never ever in the world of the UTM. Now Cisco is uh, very close. Uh, I'll say that the engineers of the Cisco's, whatever they do, uh, they got recognized with a well-known company called as a Gartner. If you, got, you can Google what is a Gartner over there, Gartner is nothing but the number one company as of now who does the analytical reports, generates that, and most of the clients follow these particular reports. So next generation firewall is basically a terminology that has been given by the, uh, by the analytical company called as a Gartner in the year 2004. And Cisco, when they have done many, many R&Ds and many uh, engineers have worked on that, they came with one device. I'll tell you what is the name of the device. Now Cisco wanted that device to give a name as a UTM XXXX box or they want to give this as a Gartner uh, naming convention and Gartner has given a naming convention as what? Next generation firewall. So Cisco has to decide at that particular moment whether we should give our devices as a UTM naming convention or next generation. At the time in the year 2013, all right, what happened is uh, the UTM uh, is not as much as or the IDC, the company IDSC, which has given the terminology as a UTM, is not that much familiar. It's not that up to the mark where the Gartner is doing a tremendous job. Cisco knows that if we give a certain naming convention to the Gartner terminology, it is going to help our business. That's why all the new devices of the Cisco now called as next generation firewall ASA next generation firewall like called as a firepower and so and so forth they didn't use firepower as a utm why because gartner is doing good and there will be it's a, it's a politics also at the back i have read this on the wikipedia itself that's why cisco has taken a naming convention with respect to the gartner saying this what are the utm devices then 
UTM is a uh, long back. So uh, the first uh, company was entered into the uh, the UTM world. One unified box is the Dell Sonic Wall, right? So you will see that Huawei, Dell, uh, Dell Sonic Wall, your watch guards and all this, they have given their name as UTM Sonic Wall. And Cisco, Palo Alto, they say what? Next generation firewall. Hardly any difference, but the terminologies are different on the basis of the analytical companies. So hardly any difference over there. How Cisco entered into the market of next generation firewall? Now I believe you got an idea what is the next generation firewall. It's a terminology given by the analytical company called as a Gartner, but they entered into next generation firewall field in the year 2013 by acquiring multiple uh, companies, multiple acquisitions has been done there, and we know that Cisco is a big fish. They acquire many companies, like anything. So, what are the things? How the approaches comes into the picture? So, we have a different vendors. So, first generation firewall. What are they capable of? When we talk about the first generation firewall, let's say talk about ASA firewall. We have what 5505, 5510, and so and so forth. 55, 25, 55, 15. These all are the uh, uh, first generation of firewall which is being basically deployed in your routed mode that means every port will be in a different subnet we have already uh, know that the, from this firewall if they are connected with let's say for example with an internet any client is present over there if you want to build a VPN tunnel so these are capable of doing what your VPA, uh, VPN, RA VPN can be done. It is capable of doing routing. If any traffic which is coming inside, they are capable of doing a natting on top of that. They were stateful and basic ACL as well as user authentication can be done on top of these particular firewalls. So these were the basic which we used to say that. Then the new things came into the picture like deep packet inspection, which we say about IPS, email security, web, DLP, and advanced threat protection, which we also call as a sandboxing. You can Google it right now at this particular moment after pausing this video, what is a sandboxing? It is a computer security feature. It's a computer security feature. That means you isolate the applications so that one application, if it's get impacted by something, it is not going to impact another resources over there so that your CPU utilization will be impacted over there. You can move to the wireless security and a centralized or an on-box management. This is what the new things has been developed over there. Now what happens over here? Let's talk about this. So Cisco UTM's advanced function, which we generally call as next generation firewall, were not supported concurrently on the ASA firewall. IPS is a different software or maybe a hardware module. Context security comes with a CSC, a different hardware module that you need to insert in the firewall for your web and the email security. Context aware security through CX, which is your software or hardware model again, comes with only web security, which is nothing but your IR port. Then happens what acquisitions. How this works, let's understand that. Cisco does many acquisitions. In the year 2013, they have done the first acquisition of what the source fire as a company over there which is a computer security core of its next generation firewall. In the previous, I, I think so, before so far, they have done cognitive because this is in the year July 2013. This is maybe in month of March, something like this. Cognitive uh, security in the year 2013. Now, what is this? Cognitive threat analysis use a behavioral modeling and anomaly detection in identify malicious activity. It helps the time, which is very good thing. See, at the end of the day, if any of the devices which is creating a reports, right, are detecting the, tra uh, the different kinds of traffic, the number of time taken by that device, if it's less, it is will be more appreciated. So it helps reduce the time to discover of threats and operating inside the network. So cognitive security was a good acquisition that they have done by this, that, uh, that detection time has been reduced drastically. So as far as their may, major, major uh, uh, acquisition, I'll say that. Now, let's understand how the thing's working over there. We have two giant companies, which we generally call as what one is uh, Cisco most uh, competitor is one is Palo Alto. And another one is your Cisco itself. So I'm going to write here the Palo Alto. And then we have what the Cisco over there. Palo Alto till the year 2013 has taken a market like anything. And if you see the Gartner report itself, Palo Alto still in the year 2018 is the number one on the chart. But Cisco is the leading competitor with them. 
So Cisco and Palo Alto are now next to each other. They are giving the challenge to the Palo Alto like anything. Now, what is the agenda of the Palo Alto? Palo Alto says that, boss, we have one device. We have a one operating system on top of that. And we have one GUI, which is capable of from your layer two to layer seven, all features. Along with that, we give you web security, email security. We does deep packet inspection. We give DLP data prevention loss and uh, many other things. And X, Y, all the things, whatever the thing uh, can be deployed nowadays in a, in a particular device, they give everything. Till the year 2013, Cisco have there still three different products. ASA firewall, IPS with different module, as well as web appliances, as well as email security, they have to have a module. And every device, every device has their own GUI. So the GUI that they have given for the ASA is called as ASDM. Your IPS will have a different GUI. And iron port is the name of what your uh, web or the email security over there. Now, saying this, after doing the acquisition of the source file, let me tell you a story over there. Once they have acquired the source file, Cisco wanted, what is the source file? They were the number one IPS company at that particular moment of a time, which uh, does the deep packet inspection very well. And the engine, the source file engine is basically called as a snot engine, where all the rules will be deployed and it does the behavior. It checks the signature. I'll be very honest. It will check the signature as well as the pattern of that particular device. Now, once Cisco acquired that, Cisco has a major challenge now, where to deploy this. So Cisco in the starting has deployed this on their ASA firewall as well as certain ISR routers. But this ISR routers, when they deployed the source fire snot engine, it got drastically down. So they left with what only firewall, ASA firewall. Now, the question comes here is the hardware is still the same. What extra that we need to do so that we can have these source file services on the ASA firewall. Cisco created a new kind of a devices in which they have given what two hard disk slots over there. And there you insert SSD hard drive. SSD, remember that. And the name of this product family given a name Cisco ASA X model. So now if you see and open the GUI, uh, uh, if you open the Internet Explorer, right, or any of the uh, browser, and if you try to check what are the different models of Cisco ASA firewall, if any of the model in the last, if it's showing X over there, that means that model can support your source fire services. If any of the model, like we have the old, old days models are like 5505, there is no X at the back. That means it does not support. We have a new model now, 5505. Uh, six hyphen X. If X is there at the back end, that means there they have given a facility of an hard disk. Where on top of these hard disks, you are going to install what source fire services on top of that. And once the source fire services has been deployed, you can make you can say that it's a little bit we have joined what the next generation firewall. But the story doesn't end over here. Now what they got is. Like Palo Alto, they achieve one thing, one box, one box can do each and everything because IPS is doing everything over there. IPS is a very powerful, have a very powerful engine that we call as a snort engine, which is capable of doing, uh, checking all the behavior of the packet, signature, proxies, everything it can do. But one box to manage your firewall, you still have a GUI called as an ASDM. But to manage your layer 7 services, you have a different GUI, which we call as your Firepower Site Manager GUI over there. There are different GUIs. To manage your IPS, still different GUI. To manage your firewall, you still have a different GUI. Or maybe you can use your CLI. That means we still didn't reach towards what the follow -up. Down the line, Cisco has said that I'll create a new device itself, not the manipulation of the ASA adaptive security appliance. They said that I'll create a new device which they have given a new name called as FTD itself. On top of which I'll be having one unified operating system which is capable of doing from L2 to L7 all the things and can be managed from one single GUI itself and the name of the GUI is called as an FMC. This is your called as FMC over there. 
So yes, now can I say that after having all these FTD boxes over there, Cisco is now close to your Palo Alto, which is giving the same thing over there. Now, if you know uh, FTD, you can easily do your Palo Alto also because only the naming conventions has been a little bit changed as for me, as well as the GUI is a little bit changed, but the functionality wise, both are working fine over there. That's how the Cisco came into the next generation firewalls. I hope you understand this little bit of the story. Now saying this, not only Cisco acquired the source fire to get one unified, but they need to, if they need to compete with Palo Alto, they need to acquire many different companies also. So what are the remaining companies they have acquired? They acquired the Thread Grid, which is now you call as an advanced malware protection AMP. So it's a cloud premises tool. That means AMP is a advanced malware protection can be integrated with your source file that we will see in the next generation firewall lectures can be integrated with the source file can be integrated with the eyes can be integrated with the AAC appliances and many different products what says that I have a device a normal device over there like my endpoint my Mac laptop or your uh, Windows desktop or whatever I'll install a software over there if it detect any malicious thing on that device it will send that report to a cloud or you can send that particular thing where to your, uh, your next generation firewall devices which is your fmc source fire device from where you can check and report the things so that that advanced technology they have achieved and this is the entire topic how, how it works that we're going to talk when the advanced malware protection uh, lectures itself so that is basically been taken after doing the acquisition of the threat grid in a very same way open dns blacklisted all the worldwide blacklisted domain in one shot we'll get to know now well, because we have taken the open dns you read about this what is an open dns lan coop this is what it provides the network behavior analytical threat uh, visibility security intelligence to protect against top cyber security threats so all the cyber security threats lan coop was a company in the year 2015 was doing pretty good with respect to the cyber security and what what cisco has done good in that they have acquired all these particular things so i hope you understand that what is the next generation firewall what are the different terminologies and how the utm is a bit similar or a bit different to that in the last I just want to tell you with this particular slide uh, the the your Gartner report this is your Gartner reports can you see that who is the challenger right now the topmost level challenger is nothing but Cisco as if now who is challenging and who is the reader right now it's nothing but your Paul Alto Fortinet is the next and the checkpoint is doing pretty good over there so Cisco is coming very close to this this is basically your call as quadrant magic quadrant uh, Gartner has given this name as a magic quadrant and according to this quadrant you can see that that Cisco is doing very good coming neck to neck to the Palo Alto after doing an acquisition multiple acquisition I'll say that so by saying this can I say in the last so what is the next generation firewall a next generation firewall is a device which is having giving you the high availability which gives you an IPS features which gives you an analysis as well as automation both analysis can be done automation can be done with respect to the restful apis it gives you amp advanced malware protection it gives you url filtering identity and policy based control with vpn built-in network profiling avc and network for uh, network firewall routing as well as switching can be done so one os one management all the features called as next generation firewall I hope you enjoyed this particular video. In the next video, we're going to start with the uh, interfaces, ACL and the NAT. Thank you very much.